Hey guys, welcome to the second video in my uh, Python for Everybody series. So in these videos we're going to solve the exercises from the Python for Everybody book by Dr. Chuck. In the description you'll find the link to, to check out his course and his book which he has put uh, up online for free. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So I have copy pasted the exercises here, the three exercises for chapter three. In the first one, we just have to rewrite uh, the pay computation um, script we wrote in the previous chapter. And uh, we just have to rewrite the computation so to give the employee 1.5 times the hourly rate for hours worked over above 40 hours. So we will take into account overtime. Okay, so just let's copy paste first the code we wrote uh, last time. It should be... Um, in chapter 2 here. Okay, I'm just copying this. We don't need this anymore. Okay, uh, for all you beginners, just remember these are just comments, so the, uh, the Python interpreter will ignore all these lines. So here we can write our code and we can modify the one we copied from the uh, previous exercise. So we need to get the hours from the user, we need to get the rate, and now we will change how we calculate the pay. Okay, so uh, if the hours worked has been more than 40, we have to put a if condition there. So just check if hours bigger than 40. Okay, now um, we want to calculate all the hours which are above 40 to be 1.5 times uh, the usual rate. So the pay would be... Um, so the number of hours uh, more than 40 will be in parentheses hours minus 40. So if someone worked uh, 45 hours then we would have only 5 hours uh, over time which will be calculated times the rate times 1.5 okay and now we have to calculate also um, the 40 hours which are with the usual rate so plus uh, 40 times the rate so this would be the pay if uh, an employee has worked overtime okay and uh, for cases when someone has worked 40 hours or less we put an else and we just calculate the pay uh, the usual way, just pay equals number of hours times the rate. Okay? And then uh, we just print, remove this line here, and we just print the pay here. Seems about right. Let's run it. Okay, so I'm going to enter the hours 45 the rate let's let it be 10 so we will have 475 that seems to be working let's check something under 40 so uh, if I work 38 hours the rate is again 10 so 380 no overtime this time okay so that's it for this um, exercise okay guys let's continue with the next one so uh, for exercise 2, we're just going to rewrite again our pay program and using try and accept so that the program uh, handles uh, non-numeric input gracefully by printing an error message and exiting the program. Okay, so let's copy first what we wrote in the previous exercise. Okay, and just put it here. We have to uh, wrap with the try except block only the two lines of code which take the input from the user so first what we do is we add a try here okay and put this inside the try block just by indenting indenting it to the right and then and then we do an except here so basically what a try except does is that uh, the try tells the python interpreter to to try to uh, run this code in here and if there's something wrong, uh, don't stop uh, the execution of the script, by, but just go to the uh, accept and run the uh, accept block. So in the accept block, we just type in uh, 
we just have to print out uh, a message so we'll put print and we uh, say to the user uh, please error please enter numeric input input which is right here I'm just going to put this into quotes okay so uh, we print this error message but if uh, if this accept block is run that means that we don't have proper input for the hours and rates so we don't need to execute this part of the code so we want our program to stop to quit right here so after this print line we just have to run quit this will uh, stop the script right here and won't execute this code okay so let's try this out okay if we give uh, appropriate we, we get an appropriate uh, response and Let's try to run it again. I'm going to give the number of hours as a string, 45. You see, I get this error message and the program stop, stops right there. That's what we want. And if we do another test, put the number of hours correctly, but the rate should be uh, wrong. Again, we get an error input and the program stops right there. So this is all we need to do for this exercise. Uh, let's move on to the third and the last one for this chapter. This is a bit longer. So for this exercise, we have uh, to write a program to prompt for a score between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. If the score is out of range, we need to print an error message. If the score is between 0.0, .0 and 1.0, we have to convert it to a letter grade a letter grade according to this table. So uh, A is bigger or equal to 0 0.9, B is bigger or equal to 0 0.8, and so on until to the letter F. Okay, so first things first, let's get an input from the user. So we get an input grade using the input function. I'm just printing the message enter score. Okay. Um, we need this input as a float, so we just wrap this uh, with a float function, which converts it to a float. Okay, so um, we get the grade now. Now, first thing we have to check is if it's between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. Uh, all the cases where uh, the grade is less than 0 or bigger than 1.0, we need to print an error message. So we check that first, if grade is less than zero or grade is uh, bigger than one. Just for 1.0, it's better. It should work with one as well. So this or here uh, covers all our cases that we don't want. So uh, all the cases where the grade is less than zero or bigger than 1.0. For this we need to print an error message. Just print um, score is out of a range. Of range. Okay. Now we're going to use an elif which means that we have to cover all the cases not covered by this if but uh, that's that fulfill the condition that we put in the elif. So elif grade is bigger or equal than 0 0.9. We just have to print the letter A. Okay, so we continue with this logic with elifs for the letter B, C, D. Okay. And for the... So if it's uh, bigger than 0, 0 0.8, we print the letter uh, B here, sorry, B, uh, 0 0.7, we get a C, and 0 0.6, we print a D. And for all the letters, for, for all the scores lower than 0 0.6, we put an else condition, which uh, we get the letter F. So why use uh, elif in here? Because when, when you do this elif a grade is bigger than or equal than 0 0.8, we are sure to catch only the scores between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Because 
uh, if we get 0 0.85, we know uh, it will be caught by this elif here. And if an elif uh, catches it, then the code, uh, the other elif closes or the else close won't be executed. So even though 0 0.85 is still bigger than 0 0.7, this won't be executed because we get only uh, this elif condition which uh, is caught. Okay, let's try this out. So let's give it a 0 0.95. We, we get an A. Uh, let's put a space in here so it looks better. And let's run it again. If I put a 0 0.5, we get an F, of course. If I put 1.1, um, we get the score is out of range. If I put a minus 3, again, score is out of range. If I put, for example, 0 0.75, we have to get a C. 0 0.75, we get a C. Okay, that seems to be working fine, just like we want to. Oh, the only thing we can uh, try to, to uh, cover here is that when the user enters a wrong input, for example, he enters the score uh, written down as a string. So for that, we can put a try except block like we did in the previous exercise. So here we wrap this with a try except. So we try to get uh, a good input, but if the user um, enters something like uh, a string, but which is not which cannot be converted to a float, we go to the except clause and we print bad input or bad score. And then we want the program to quit, just like we did in the previous exercise. So this part of the program is not executed. Let's try this out. So if we give uh, something like uh, 9, we get a bad score. And if we give a proper score, like 0 0.93, we get what we want. OK, so this finishes. Um, the third exercise, that's it for this chapter. Uh, I hope you find this helpful. Please comment below if you want to discuss something or you have a question about the exercises. I would encourage you to go and read uh, Dr. Chuck's book. This is very, very good for beginners if you want to get started with Python. Uh, you can also check out my other tutorial series on Django where you learn how to build a simple web app. Um, it's also targeted to beginners. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, and also check out my Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.